If you have learned how to multiply by one digit numbers, you've probably run into a problem where the product of two of your digits is greater than 10. Let's look at what we do when we have a problem like this, 24 times three. And so I've lined it up vertically, my ones places are all lined up, and I can get right to work. I start by multiplying the three by the, the, the digit that's in the ones place in my 24. So three times four, or four times three, which equals 12. So I know that I've got four times three equals 12 as the answer to my first step. The problem is that I need to write that answer into the ones place. But since the answer is a two digit number, there's not room in my ones place to write the answer. And so what I do is I take the two, I take the digit that's in the ones place position of my product, and I write that two here in the ones place of the product in my final answer. I take the one that is in the tens place here, in my 12 here, the, the uh, digit in the tens place is the one, and so I take that one and I actually write it right above the two here in the tens column. And then I proceed with my work. And so the next step in doing this problem is to multiply three by the digit that's in the tens place of my 24, which is a two. So three times two equals six or two times three equals six, and, but I'm not finished yet. I can't just go write this six here. I actually take this one and I add it to the six. This one that I carried over or regrouped from my previous, um, my previous step. And so I took this, I, I take this three times two equals six, and I add the one which is the seven. So my answer then is seven for my tens place. And so if you get to this point in a problem where you multiply two of your one digit multiplications together and you end up with your answer being a two digit number like four times three or three times four equals 12, you're going to do what we call regrouping. We just worked with some regrouping, just like we did with addition. And so the regrouping is that I take the two, the uh, digit that's in the ones place, and I place it here in my final answer. So I put the two there in the ones place, but I regroup the one. And I take this digit that's in the tens place and I regroup it by putting it in the tens column. So I just set it right up there, do my next step of three times two equals six, add one equals seven, and I place my seven here in the tens place of my final answer. So I can see here that 24 times three equals 72. Let's take a look for a minute at a mistake that's commonly made. If you are working on a multiplication problem and you don't regroup, you can come up with some pretty wrong answers. So let's look at this 24 times three again and see what would happen if we didn't regroup. If I looked at this and just said, oh, three times four equals 12, and I wrote my answer down here, 12. And then I said, oh, three times two equals six, and I wrote my answer here, six. You can see that the answer that I get here from not regrouping and doing this problem wrong is very different than the correct answer of 72. So we don't want to do our problems like this. We don't want to forget to regroup. Let's look at another multiplication problem that involves regrouping. This time I'm going to multiply a three digit number by three. So let's make sure that our problem is set up correctly before we get to work. 374 
times 3. And so I want to make sure that my digits that are in the ones place are all lined up neatly over here in the ones column. So this looks good. My 3 and 4 are lined up and I can get to work. So I start out with 3 times the digit that's in the ones place position, which in 374 is 4. So 3 times 4, or 4 times 3, the answer is 12. But I'm only going to write the 2 of my answer 12. I'm only going to write the digit that's in the ones place of my answer. And the digit that's in the tens place of my answer, I'm going to move over here to the tens column, and I'm going to regroup by drawing, or by putting a little, placing my 1 there above the 7. So then I move on to my next step, which is now to multiply the 3 by the digit that's in the tens place of the 374. So the digit that's in the tens place is 7. And so I'm going to multiply 3 times 7, which I've memorized. It's 21. But I'm not finished yet. Don't forget that I have to add this 1 to my 21. And so I get the answer of 22. Now again, I'm going to regroup and I'm going to put the digit that's in the ones place of my answer right here. So 22 is my answer. So I'm going to put the 2 here. And then the other 2, that's the part of the 20, is going to regroup and go over here to the next column. So, and I can keep on doing this and doing this with larger and larger numbers. Each time I regroup, I do the, the, the digit that's in the ones place here, and in the next column, I, do the, I place the digit that's in the tens place of the answer. So now I move over to my next step, which is to multiply 3 times the digit that's in the hundreds place of 374, which is 3. So 3 times 3 equals 9, but I'm not finished yet. I need to make sure that I add that 2 to my answer. So 3 times 3 is 9, add 2 is 11. And I'm going to write my 11. Since I'm finished now, I can write my whole 11 here. And so my answer, I'll put my comma here to help me keep track. But my answer then is 374 times 3 equals 1,100. 22.